Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the PL300 exam preparation series where we are exploring the first learning path, prepare the data. In this video, we are going to explore the topic configure data loading for queries, which is part of the section transform and load the data. In the previous videos, we have explored in detail different transformations that can be done in Power Query Editor. Now it is time to load everything inside the data model area to Power, Power BI so that the reporting and visualization part can be covered. So now we are ready to load our data into the main Power BI desktop environment where we will use this data to create the DAX measures, DAX based formulas and do the reporting and visualization part. So let's go to Power Query Editor and see how we can configure the data loading process. Here I'm inside the Power Query Editor and this is the area, the data model area where there are seven queries which have been transformed by performing different transformations. And now these queries, these seven queries are ready to be loaded into the Power BI environment. Just remember that only those queries are loaded into the Power BI environment which have the enable load flag set to enable. So if I right click on this query, I'm going to see that the enable load flag is enabled. And this is the case for all the other queries that we can easily distinguish between the queries on which the enable load flag has been set by comparing it with these queries. And you can clearly see that here the uh, the name of the query is in italics and it is a slightly uh, faded out or grayed out as compared to this one. So if I just go and click on the Maven market products, you're going to see that the enable load flag has not been checked on these queries. One more thing to understand is that this data loading process is also similar to how the queries will be refreshed with new data. So in order to understand the loading process, let's go and have a look at the query dependencies window which we have already explored in one of the previous videos. So let me just zoom in a bit and let's just consider one such query. So we have here in this area, the customer's query. So this is the data source. This is the query which is in the staging layer. And this is the query which is inside the data modeling layer. So this is the query that is ultimately this customer's query. This is the query that is going to be loaded in the Power BI environment. But what happens once there is a refresh, once new data comes in the data source. So if there is new data in this data source, then the process of loading the data is exactly the same as we are going to see just right now. So the new data comes in this source, it gets loaded into this part and then it gets loaded into this part, but only this part, only this part gets loaded into the Power BI environment. So this is how the data moves across the different queries. But for this particular query, which is in the staging layer, we have disabled the load. So enable load flag has been unchecked. So this query won't load only this query, which is the customer's query that is going to load. So whether we are loading the data for the first time or in any of the refresh cycles, which we are going to explore once we are talking about in uh, Power BI service in the fourth learning path, this is the process that actually happens. So it is important to understand this process that the loading process is the same if you are loading data for the first time or for every refresh cycle that takes place in the Power Power BI environment once we do the refresh manually or we do a scheduled refresh through the Power BI service. So let's close this window and now we are going to load our data which is inside the data model area here into Power BI. So what, how we can do that? So for, for this, you have to come to the extreme left and you will find the option close and apply. So if I just click on the drop down here. So I'm going to see three options, close, apply and close and apply. So close essentially means that if you, if you have done, if you haven't done anything inside the query editor and you don't do not want to apply the changes, just click on close. If you want to apply your changes, but do not want to leave the power query editor, then you can click on apply 
and if you want to apply your changes and also want the want to exit the power query editor then you click on close and apply so now i am going to click on close and apply and then we will have the data loaded in the power bi environment so let's click on close and apply here so as soon as i click the close and apply button the power query editor window is now closed and now we are in the power bi desktop environment and in this area on the right we have the data pane and we can clearly see that all our queries the seven queries that we had in the data model layer these have been loaded in the power bi desktop environment now this is the environment where we are going to create the visualizations where we will be writing dax measures where we will be doing a lot of other things so this is how the transformation part has now ended and we have just loaded everything from the power query editor into the power bi desktop environment one more area to consider the while we are uh, exploring the loading is that there are certain options so let me just click here on file and then options and settings and then options so there are certain options that you can set in terms of the data loading and you have to do it uh, you can you cannot do it inside the power query editor for this you will have to come inside the power bi desktop environment so this has opened up this new window we have already seen this options window before and here you can see that there are two areas where we have the data load so the first area is in the global settings and then for the current file settings there is also this area where we have the data load option so uh, let's explore what these options are so first i have selected the data load in the current file and here i find three or four options so the first option here is type detection which says that detect the column types and headers for unstructured sources so if you want power query editor to detect the data types for unstructured sources this flag if you have clicked that flag then power uh, query editor uh, actually does that then the other part is the relationships part we are not going to really touch it uh, at this point uh, because we are we haven't talked about the relationships but just uh, for the sake of uh, completion of this video you should understand that there are certain relationships uh, inside that for, for the tables that we have just pulled so we are going to explore the data modeling in the upcoming videos and you are going to understand what the relationships are with respect to the data modeling another option here is a very important option which is this time intelligence option we are going to explore this time intelligence option again once we are talking about data modeling but just to let you know or just for the sake of completion of this video that there is this flag that is there which is the auto date time flag so uh, the essence of this flag is that if you have selected this flag here then it means that you are telling power bi to generate an auto date time calendar for every date column or time column in your data so what is the significance of this we are going to explore it in another video then the next option is the background data so you you have seen that once we were working in power query editor we were seeing just data previews uh, for uh, for the changes that we were doing for the different column profiling options so if you want this data preview option to actually work and download the data in the background you can you can check this flag but it is recommended that for larger data sets once we are we are uh, we are handling millions of rows it is advisable that we just go and uncheck this option once we have done the initial column profiling because every time it is going to download uh, data in the in the background which actually uh, hurts the performance of our queries and power bi in general another option is related to the parallel loading of table so once we have connected to uh, data sources and there are queries that are being sent to the data sources then it is not that the queries are sent sequentially so there are multiple concurrent jobs which are open in parallel so you have the option to either disable this or you can set your own custom option for parallel loading of tables uh, or otherwise you can stick with the default option which i guess is is 10 uh, there are 10 uh, concurrent jobs that are open but this is again related to the optimization part and we are 
uh, not going to talk about this in, in this video. Then the last option is the Q&A option. So we are going to talk about the Q&A option once we are in the third learning path. So this option actually uh, pertains to the Q&A option in the reporting when it says that turn on Q&A to ask natural language questions about your data. So this has something to do with that functionality. So by default, this option is on and you should also keep that on so that you can uh, use that uh, natural language querying option available in Power BI. Now I'm going to click on data load inside the global option here. So the global option means that this option is, uh, is applicable not only for this file, but for all the other files. So the first option here is again related to the type detection that we saw. So here you have multiple options uh, where you can always detect the column types, where you can uh, set the column detection for unstructured sources, or you can even ten, tell Power BI that you do not want to detect any column type or headers for unstructured sources. So the default option is the the one which is already uh, set here. Next, we are going to have a look at the background data. So you've already talked about the data previews that are downloaded in the background. So this is the option. It is similar to the option that we just discussed, which is related to the type detection. So you have again got three options and the default option is that allow the data previews to download in the background according to the each files setting. Then the next one is the parallel loading of tables. So again, we are not going to discuss this here because it has something to do with the uh, process improvement or the optimization. So that is not a topic for this video. Then next, we again have the time intelligence option. We have already talked about it, which is about the auto date time field. So we are going to talk about it again in the optimization. And last, there is this advanced option, which actually handles the, the caching. So you have on the on your computer certain uh, area of the cache which is used for data management. So it has nothing to do uh, with uh, this particular section. And this is an advanced option. So we are not going to discuss this option in this video. So we have discussed the data loading process in this video. Before I actually go and, and close this video, let me just go back into the Power Query Editor and show you one other option which is available. So if I go and click first on the in the staging area, so we have seen we have seen that we have unchecked this enable load uh, flag. But you must have seen that as soon as we uncheck this enable load flag, there is another flag which says include in report refresh. This flag is unchecked uh, automatically. But if I come here and click on the customer's query here and see where the enable load flag is checked, then this option and include in report refresh is also available. So if I just uncheck this particular option here, then it allows me to uncheck this option. So what does this option mean? So there are certain tables in your data model, which you which you know that they are these tables are never going to change. So you know that there is going to be no new record that is going to come in those tables. So you have this option to uncheck this include in report a refresh flag so that every time a refresh takes place, then this particular table where this flag has been unchecked, then this particular table is not a refresh. So in our case, we do not want that. So I am I have actually just enabled this flag again. So that's that's it for the data loading part. So just uh, keep in mind that certain options that we have seen, you can be asked uh, a small question related to the data data loading options, especially the enable load, include in re report fresh, refresh, and some of the desktop settings that we just saw. So that's all for this video, and I will see you in the next one.